four, five, six, seven, eight, Colby, nine, ten, Matthew, eleven, Kirsten, twelve, Molly, thirteen. Let's give everybody a second and then we'll pick the last three. Okay, then. I like how you're using your resources. So we're looking for our and we're looking for on and we're looking for there and unloaded. Let's look. Colby, you have your hand up. Do you see something that you're questioning? And. And. All right. And what do you think it is? Well, I think and's a conjunction. What kind? He's got it. Oh, fanboy. Concordant. Coordinating it. It is one of the fanboys. So go on up and change it. Good job. Yeah. Now, does anybody else see anything else up there that they're questioning? Stafford? Well, I'm not questioning it, but um, since and is a coordinating conjunction, then I know what structure the sentence is. Oh, if we have a coordinating conjunction, what kind of sense are we going to have? Compound. We're going to have a compound sentence. Unless the conjunction is just joining two things. Um, we have to determine what two things it's joining. It, it could be joining two nouns. It could be joining two prepositions. Now, I don't want you to just think that every time we see a coordinating conjunction, it automatically means a compound sentence. It could be a compound noun. It could be a compound verb. But in this sentence, if it's joining two clauses, then for sure you hit upon something for sure. He came up to me and said, "What? I just looked at the dictionary and log is a noun. Well, can log be a noun? Yeah. Can you pick up a log? It's describing a house. Right. We have to more carefully look at how it's used in this sentence. It's in here. It could just be a house. Right, right. So that's good for us to always keep in mind. What kind of adjective is it? Oh, It's a definite article. Definite article. Because we're talking about a specific oxen, set of oxen, aren't we? Right? And we have a noun, and we have a verb, and a pronoun, and a noun, preposition, adjective, adjective, noun. Is that typical? To follow a preposition yeah. with an mm -hmm. adjective, adjective, well, noun? Yeah. 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 That's mm -hmm. pretty much what you're going to find in uh, one of those phrases, isn't it? Those are the parts of speech that get involved. We never see verbs in a prepositional phrase, and we don't see um, adverbs in a prepositional phrase too often. Uh -huh. Or yeah. basically, right? Basically, adjectives and nouns or pronouns. So the pronoun can always take the place of a noun. And here we go again. Preposition, noun, no adjectives that time. Conjunction, adverb, pronoun, and verb. So this adverb has to be telling us about the unloaded. Where are we unloaded? Yep. It does tell us about that verb. That that's our tip off. That we picked the right part of speech for it. This sentence is being a, an adverb. Awesome. Let's go to the second round. We're looking for subjects and predicates. Subjects. Okay, we have one set over there. We unloaded as a subject predicate set. And on the other side, oxen pulled is a subject predicate. And it pulled. Is it an action or a linking action. verb? Action. So it's an action verb. And when we have an action verb, watch out, table. What are we going to look for next? Uh, direct object. object. Yep, direct object. What question are we going to ask ourselves to know if there's a direct object or not? Oh, there you go. There's your direct object. So would you come up and identify mm -hmm. Wagon as our direct object? All right, just put a D-O. Now, once we find a direct object, what do we always look for? Indirect And if we have one, it's going to be in front of the direct object. The important parts of the sentence are identified. Let's go to the third one. We're looking for phrases. Phrases. What kind of phrases do we have? Yeah, 
Okay. And um, tell us what kind of sentence this is of the four kinds of sentences. That's structure. Kind. It's a declarative. Would you write that on there? And what structure is it, Sapphire? Compound. It is a compound. And what is the structure of a compound sentence? Definitely. There. Yes. Uh, who notices what word was left out of the two independent clauses? What word was left out of those two clauses? Maya? And. And. Why was it left out? Because it's not really part of either one, it's just connected to two. That's right. It's like glue that connects the two. Um, and it's not part of either one. A subordinate conjunction is part of one of them, but a coordinate conjunction is not part of either one.